<laughs> How's everybody doing? Okay, today we are going to do Leo and Taurus. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do Leo and Taurus. Uh, people have been wanting me to do this for a while. And as well as the other 348 combinations. It's a lot to get to all of them. So please excuse me if I have not gotten to all of it. But it's a lot. A lot. And then, you know, some people want me to do same gender or compatibility. And that's a whole other series. And that's going to require also another 300 and so somehow plus combinations because I have to do part one and two. You know, y'all don't mind me, but I got to go fast. This is a cigarette, by the way. You know, it ain't no joint. I got to say that. Yeah, you know, rolled up, you know, roll, I roll, you know, the cigar, you know, like the tar cigarette, and then weed. <laughs> so, but, you know, because I'm, I'm trying to do a whole run through and do a couple of series in one night. So I didn't, it's, it's, uh, it's about five o'clock in the afternoon. It's not four in the morning. I, I want to do a whole series between now and four in the morning, see how many I can get done. Because, you know, uh, I, I'm running a theater now. I'm in theater season, and I'm in fundraising mode as well. And I run a garden. And, you know, I run a lot, couple of organizations, and, you know, it's a lot of work to do, so i got to do a lot of videos so that like it doesn't take away from the schedule of running the theater and running my other organizations. Okay, so um, we are going to jump right in. And we are going to talk, well, no, we're not going to jump right in yet. <laughs> so let me put these down. Let me talk about nature, Mother Nature, and how we can create a parallel, Taurus and Leo. We have to bring it to a larger frame of reference. So like that, we can get a picture as to how to look at the personality and ego of these uh individuals okay alrighty so now I am trying to begin uh, this is something happening again I'm telling you my Saturn ooh, my Saturn you know trying to get the, the audio to work and it's not working all right, you know, we this one just just, just got to do what you got to do. Okay, perfect. Okay. Here we go. One more. One more. One more. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. So, you know, it's just... It is what it is, right? Okay. Now, when we're talking about... um. Leo and Taurus, we have to look at the fact that we have two fixities going on. Two fixities going on. Okay? And these two fixities is the fixed earth and then you have fixed fire. So what can you attribute uh, fixed earth and fixed fire. Two fixes. A modality uh, square. It will be incompatible. So, and then of course you have the element of fire and earth. And that's an elemental square. So already it seems like we have uh, an incompatible situation. Both the modality as well as the elemental. As well as the elemental. So you would think that this combination is uh, falls under the incompatibility of science. But actually, it doesn't. It falls on the compatibility of sign. I know it's crazy, but the fact of the matter is 
that this combination does work to astrologers surprise it in all tents and purposes this combination should not work there's a modality square and there's an elemental square so there are differences of opinion, differences of philosophy, and differences of how they approach to live their lives as individuals. And both are pretty stubborn in their ways. No? Both of them are stuck. Or they could be not so much stuck because it's a modality of being, okay? Both the Taurian and the Leo have a modality of being and living and existing, and they follow their own code of ethics, and they don't let anything or anyone move them from their code of ethics and how they choose to live their lives and how they choose to interact with people. This is important to understand. Both signs are solidarities in and of themselves. Both signs are a law unto their own being. How do we see this law of being when we're dealing with nature? Very easy. Look at the sun. The sun is fixed. It stays there in space. I've made many references about the sun and Leo, right? All you got to do is look at my Leo videos. We need that sun there. Or we cease to exist. But the sun has its own laws of physics. The earth is also fixed fixed earth and the fixed earth as it travels around the orbit of the ecliptic of the sun even though the sun has its own physics and chemical compositions and molecular structure and and all that stuff and the laws of physics and how the sun operates you know it is independent. It doesn't need the sun, the, the earth, in order for the sun to operate and to follow the laws of physics, right? Well, the earth too has its own laws of physics as it travels around the sun and is uh, ecliptic. The earth also travels on its own axis. Not only does it, not only does it go around the sun, it rotates on its own orbit, on its own axis, as it goes around the sun, and the moon with it, in a both symbiotic, sardonic movement. So the earth has its own physics and its own laws of being, and so does the sun. Can both of these bodies compromise their laws of physics to complement and appease each other? No. The answer is no. The earth is the earth and it follows its own laws of physics. Any inch of movement from the Goldilocks zone where it is stationed, it can be our own destruction. Notice that nature is a delicate balance. One degree drop of our Earth's atmosphere can plunge us into the Ice Age. So the fabric of life is extremely delicate. It is a delicate balance. It is a song and dance that's so structured and so balanced that any gravitational wave from space can disrupt the harmony between the sun and the planets. Like a meteor heading our direction. Like Apophis. According to cosmologists, the meteor Apophis will hit us in 2029. It will come this close. 
Well, we as astrologers and shamans know of Apophis. And the cosmologists are wrong in their calculations. It's not going to hit us in 2029, but 2021! The 2012 phenomenon is really not occurring in 2012, all that hype. It's really going to occur in 2021. Reverse the numbers. Because, you know, we're not the smartest folks when it comes to mathematics. I'm just saying. The Asians kick our ass in that department. So, and that's, and that Apophis that's coming our way in 2021, even though they say 2029, their calculations are off by nine years, eight years to be exact. But no matter, the point is still clear. That meteor represents Taurus. It's a fixed earth. Maybe not the earth of our molecular and structures as dictated by the periodic table in our science classes and science rooms. Maybe it's made out of another chemical composition or element. But the point is that it is a fixity. It has its own nature, its own law of being. We cannot stop that media from brushing close to us any more than we throw a rocket out there and try to break it. If anything, it might make it worse at the speed that it's traveling. So for this combination to work, oh, and by the way, we are calling it compatibility of signs. It is compatibility of signs, not incompatibility like one would think or one would suspect. Oh, no, 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 no. These two signs are compatible. And the only reason why they are compatible is because they know each other. And they respect each other. They respect each other's position and each other's routine. <coughs> if that's not the case, I'm a little jello here. Just If that's not the case, then it would be because these couples are young. This is one combination that if you don't know yourself completely and you don't understand the impact that you have on another person, you can do a lot of damage. And let me tell you where the damage will come from. It will most probably come from both of them, but each of them in different ways. Leo can be intensely, if we're talking about the Leo woman with a Taurus man, let's start there. She could be very narcissistic, not meaning to be, very self-absorbed, not realizing the damage or the dismissiveness that she may be causing, not because she means to be mean or to be a bitch, but it's because she's just completely self unaware. Especially true, this is especially true if we're dealing with a couple that's young, that's below 30. So now she's with a Torian man, and the Torian man, that young, right, below 30, can be just as stubborn and not as dense as a Libra in a candy store. A Libra. Not a child, but a Libra. Because Venus rules both Taurus and Libra. So I understand that there's a modality of thinking and of reacting to things that might appear a little bit obtuse or at least naive and unprecedented on the part of the Taurian. The Taurian will be equally as naive as the Leo woman. It's like two children in a playpen. And if they both are doing their own thing in that playpen, then everything is fine. But the minute one kid wants a toy that the other one has, and he don't want to share, and that's probably the Leo woman, 
Now I want to share, you know, it's her thing. Then that might cause the lead, the, the, the Taurus to, to throw a fit in a tantrum. But it could happen the other way around. The little woman might, my the little girl might want something from the guy and the guy and the playpen, and he might not want to share. So she'll cry and, and fuss and, and, and make a scene, you know, just because she's not getting what she wants. This relationship between Taurus and Leo can be what's called a symbiotic relationship. Both of them can mirror each other or they can project onto each other the worst traits that they have within themselves and also the best that they have to offer within themselves. This is not a couple that traditionally speaking does well working together. Remember, one, both of them are fixed. Both of them are fixed signs. So both of them are fixed in their ways and in their way of being and in the ways of behaving. And they're not going to budge. So the only way that this can work is if they have a liking towards each other. And of course, the sexual attraction has to be off the charts as the glue that will keep them interested. What makes this relationship kind of impossible from the outside looking in to say that it will work is that both of them have different modalities of functioning and, and modalities of being. Okay, for one, the Torian, like I mentioned in my other videos, the Torian man wants peace and he likes peace. The Leo men and women like drama and like to create displays of dramas and causes there is none. And that can disrupt the peaceful nature of the Torian existence. So in order for this relationship to work, the Torian man, if he's dealing with a little woman, let's start there, would have to give the little woman her due. He needs to allow her to be dramatic, to be flamboyant, to be histrionic. She needs to be allowed to have her friends and she needs to be able to flirt with men because she truly enjoys flirting with men. And this is part of her nature. And this flirtation of hers is innocent. There isn't anything really behind it. Because if she's with you, that you are the son that you should be worried about. And she will be the son in your life that will transform your life from what it was before you met her. She will make your life ten times better. But understand that there's a liability that comes with that. Because the Leah woman, even though she promises the world here and after, it's going to come with a price. And that price will be that you're going to have to put up with her. And not put up with her as in tolerating her. Because she doesn't want to be tolerated. But you're going to have to understand her and then accept her as she is. And that's probably the biggest hurdle, Mr. Torres, that you're going to have to face, is that you're going to have to accept this woman as she is. And, but then understand, if we make the analogy of the sun, will you change the sun to, comprom to, com to compromise, to, to complement your needs? It will be selfish of you to try to change the sun just to satisfy your means. Wear some sunscreen or some shades. You're going to have to make the judgments for the sun because you ain't going to make no judgments for the sun. Well, you have to look at the Leo relationship with a woman, Mr. Torres, kind of like the same way. If you want the glam and she's going to give you plenty of glam, she's going to give you luck. Being with a Leo woman gives you luck. Understand that. It raises the bar. It transforms your life completely. You know? 
let's not talk about the sex and everything else that comes with that. I mean, she is the lifeline to have. So why would you not give her the very simple, and it is really simple, thing that she asks, which is attention? Give her attention. And Mr. Torres, you know how to do that. You know, you are the consummate lover. And she is a woman that lives like Miss Pisces and strives on romance. And it's never too late for romance, Mr. Torres. Look, you're just gonna have to put up with the bullshit. I ain't saying that the Leo woman don't come with bullshit now. She's a lot to take on. She's a lot to take on. But wouldn't you rather though? Wouldn't you rather? I mean, think about it. I mean, listen, I, listen. If I had a Leo woman, I, I, listen, I don't care. I, she, she might put your life in danger because she's the type of woman that will have you fighting niggas. You know? She's something else. But it might be a lot more excitement than you bargained for, Mr. Torres. Now let's flip it. What if it was a Taurus woman with a Leo man? See, here it might be a little bit more unpleasant than if it was a Taurus man with a Leo woman. See, the Leo man, the actually the Taurus man, prefers, he'll deal with a little drama, a little excitement. Remember the polarity of Taurus is Scorpio. So, you know, they're not uh, immune to drama. They just don't want too much of it to disrupt their continuity and their level of comfortability. And that's very important for Taurus. Okay? So, the Taurus man will be willing to be more tolerant about the histrionics of a Leo woman. Because it'll turn him on. You know, the Taurus man loves women. Loves women. He's the consummate womanizer, along with Mr. Libra. But understand that this probably will be the case if you're dealing with a much older person. Not so much if you're dealing with someone that's younger that probably will lack the patience. And even a young Torian will like the patience. You know, it, this is it's not all the Torians gradually and naturally are patient and gentle and calm. No, 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 no. This is an evolution with Taurus. It just doesn't happen head on. You know, now if we're talking about when you're much older, then that's something different. So who will be the boss? Who will be the boss between the two? Well, I got to tell you, if we're dealing with a, a Taurus woman and a Leo man, the, Le the, the Taurus woman will be the boss. If we're dealing with a Taurus man and a Leo woman, believe it or not, the Taurus man will be the boss. Even though seemingly it will seem the other way around. But understand that the Leo woman's need for attention and stimulation and volatility is what might keep her from being focused in the bigger picture. While the Taurus man is more sure-footed and is more certain about where his future will be or lie particularly with this woman, is why he will be a little bit more calm and cool about this woman's histrionics. Plus, the, there's something sexy about the Leo woman when she's fussing and asking for attention. She's like a little girl, a little child, but she's so sexy and so deliciously irresistible that you can't help but be mad at her. You can't get mad at her. You just can't, even when you want to, 
you know, she box her eyes and that perfume she has, I don't know, that smile, she makes you feel like a million bucks. Literally. <laughs>